up everybody? This video is going to be a little different than my usual videos. I'm actually going to talk to you. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you guys about today, or do like a little show and tell of what I've been working on. Uh, I just got a 3D printer. It's a Chinese Creality CR10S and uh, I've been doing a lot of mods to it and I built an enclosure for it which is what this big black box is right here. So let's check it out. So the first thing you notice when you walk up to it is this sweet brass control panel. And I didn't use brass because I wanted to be cool, <laughs> although it is really cool. Um, I just have a big sheet of brass that I've been carrying with me forever. So that's what I used. The only thing I bought is the actually the plywood which is just half inch drawer material that you use in cabinets, Baltic birch. The brass I had, all this 80-20 rail I had. This is all leftover reclaimed stuff from a, a shop that I used to work at. It was going in the recycling. We got your on off switch, a couple more switches. I'll sh show you guys what that does. But as you turn it on, boom, custom splash screen with my logo. Uh, that's the temperature inside the enclosure. This here is the overhead lights. Boom. These were all, these didn't buy these, had these left over from job. Plexiglass on the doors. All this aluminum trim I saved from a job, leftover stuff. I do a lot of unique things for work. I build displays, theme park stuff, so we always have unique and cool material left over that is going to go in the trash or, you know, can't be used on another job, so we, they usually just give it to the guys that work in the shop. So over the years, I've collected lots of unique leftover materials, and I reuse them on my projects like this one. So I saw this design. Somebody else did this design on somewhere in the interwebs. Um, the way the doors open, I kind of like did my own version of it. So you have like full access to the printer, double doors that open. I went with sauce hinges for the doors to keep the doors closed. I got two magnets here and two magnets in that little block. So when you close it, boom, stay shut. This other switch here turns on this little fun light at the printer head. And I printed that with glow in the dark filament. So you could like, this guy gets charged up and then he glows in the dark. Got another one of those here for the extraction fan. First thing that I printed on this printer as it is now and it came out really good. I was really happy with it. Especially all that lattice type work came out really clean. Uh, this window just kinda gives me visuals at the different LEDs on the board so I know what's working, what's not working. There's a solid state relay here that has a light that turns on when the bed is heating and that's an AC bed. These mounts I designed and had my logo printed in with them. So these are to hold the frame rigidly and to adjust it to keep it square. Inside there is the Micro Swiss hot end. This is one of the first things I printed when I first got my printer before I did all this to it. And I just barely was able to print this out of ABS with the stock printer. It had some issues, it started cracking, but I, was, I managed to fix it and save it. But that is the blower for the cooling fan. Uh, I'm probably going to reprint it at some point, but um, it works for now. So this is where all the wires from the printer, all the stepper motors, hot end, the bed wires, I soldered all those wires to these 8-pin connectors, except for the AC bed, it has its own dedicated connector, which is a 4-pin, and that's there. 
So all those go into this panel and they come out down into here. Now this also, I have the screws taken out of the top. Normally those will be in and this will be stay shut, but whenever I need to upgrade the firmware or get at the electronics, this pulls out like a drawer. So I got my USB cable there, upgrade the firmware if needed, solid state relay, easy ABL module, power supply, all the wires ran as neatly as I possibly could. <laughs> Here's the back side of the panel. All these wires come through over there and they all get, they're all bundled together in a big, big snake, so to speak. And they're all tied off here. So when this closes, those just use up this space right here to uh, just coil up nicely when it's shut. Boom, no issues. Let me take you guys underneath and show you the wiring. But first, power cord gets plugged into here. Get out of the way. This was off the Creality printer. This is the original cable. This is the original connector that goes in the back of the tin black box that is just so fun to have on the side of your printer. <laughs> um, so that's where it's coming in at. And this is where it comes in on the inside. So I have that connected, zip tied nice and neat around here. There's the wires coming out of the panel there. And the snake that I was talking about to the back of the drawer over there. And I have that little tab right there to keep the drawer from falling out. That's the uh, thermostat and the wire for the overhead LEDs. If I ever need to fix anything on the printer itself, I could just disconnect it from here and you know, just take it over to my bench and work on it. Oh yeah, these clips. These are really cool, huh? No more stupid binder clips. These brackets I made have the Z-axis bearings integrated into them and a timing belt so that both of my Z-axis steppers move in sync. And it makes it convenient for lowering and raising the Z-axis just by pulling the belt. Another thing I could talk about is this material. This is a ceramic fiber paper that I got on Amazon and I ended up sprayed 77 some heavy-duty Reynolds wrap over it so the foil acts as a radiant barrier to keep the heat inside and the ceramic fireproof paper is you know just in case something happens and there's a fire the printer catches on fire at least it will help to contain it it won't just like go up in flames this guy is the SD card reader. Whoop. So I designed this bezel and it's actually, it's a box also containing the, the little reader mechanism. I'll show you guys that on the inside. Here it is on the inside. So that box is a little clamshell and then the bezel on the front pinches the clamshell together. These are called, oh, I forgot the name of them. Stepper smoothers, that's what they are. These are the stepper smoothers for X, Y, and then this is the extruder. So I got stepper smoothers on my X, Y, and extrude stepper motors. So right running alongside with the, with the LED is the thermostat for the ambient temperature in the enclosure. That's right there at the top. There's my readout. Right now it's 62.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's another cool thing that I fabricated. Since I have the Easy ABL from TH3D, I don't need to have adjuster screws down here anymore. I turned these aluminum solid mounts for the bed. I turned them with fins just to try to help alleviate any heat transfer going to the um, plate, which is the frame of the carriage for the bed. So far they work pretty good. I've had this thing up to like 100 degrees Celsius so far. You can touch this and it's just barely warm. Eventually I'm going to build this out 
and have drawers here have like three drawers inside this frame I just haven't had time to do it and I'll store all my filaments printer parts I'm probably gonna end up storing some RC car stuff in there too well I hope you guys liked that um, hopefully it was informative hopefully I inspired you to do some cool upgrades to your 3d printer if you're looking to get into 3d printing this is a good machine to start if you're good at tinkering with things if you want something that's just plug and play I would say stay away from the Chinese ones because there's a lot of research you're gonna have to do there's a lot it's not just like oh let's print some stuff yay no it's like there's a lot of upgrades to get good quality prints I like to tinker I like to solve problems and create and make things so um, for me this this was good because not only was it cheaper than a plug-and-play one but it was it allowed me to um, make it my own and customize which is what I love to do so I uh, hope you guys dig this hopefully I gave you some ideas of if you're thinking about doing it and uh, hope you enjoyed it if you like this kind of video and you want to see more of videos like this from me typically I just film what I make and add music to it if you like this style let me know in the comments below shoot me a message and uh, I'll make more alright guys thanks Thank you.